Name changes in wrestling can lead to great things for performers. I mean, how weird would it be if The Rock was still going by Rocky Maivia in 2000, or if Stone Cold was still the ringmaster? But sometimes, a name change can cause a wrestler to become forgotten by fans. Here are 10 wrestlers who changed their names and fell off the map. Flash Funk. Can we take a moment here to pause and think about how cool of a name Too Cool Scorpio is? All right, so logic dictates that WWE would keep that name when they signed him from ECW, right? Wrong. Instead of capitalizing on that name, WWE gave him a gimmick of Flash Funk. Funk was a pseudo-pimp, which seems silly in the family-friendly WWE. He would eventually use the Too Cool Scorpio name in WWE, but by then, it was too late. Rikishi. Look, there's a reason why Chris Jericho and Billy Madison used Junior as an insult. It's a damn stupid name. Released by the WWE in 2004, Rikishi rolled around the independent scene for a few years before finding work in TNA wrestling. Choosing to work under the name Junior Fatu Rikishi, he failed to make much of a splash in the promotion despite his impressive girth and was released after failing to agree on his pay with the company. Next time, skip the Junior moniker Rikishi. Colt Cabana Colt Cabana was a well-established indie wrestler well before debuting on WWE's main roster in 2008. He had spent time wrestling in WWE's developmental program as Colt Cabana, but once he hit the main roster, he went by the name Scotty Goldman. Why that name? Well, because he's Jewish. And it was assigned to him an hour before he debuted on SmackDown. While the name wasn't the only reason Cabana didn't make it in the WWE, it certainly didn't help. The Big Boss Man a respected veteran of the industry, Ray Trailer was a fixture of WWE's programming through the 90s as the Big Boss Man. When he made the jump to WCW, he took up the name The Boss, until WWE threatened to sue over similarities to their trademark. That meant Trailer went from The Boss to The Guardian Angel. The name change didn't work, and Trailer looked ridiculous in his red jacket and beret combo. Trailer languished under the name, and only when he changed his name to Big Bubba Rogers was his career saved. Brutus Beefcake he may be known by the insider wrestling fans as Hulk Hogan's friend, but Ed Leslie is known to most as WWE's Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Once he went over to WCW with Hogan in the mid-90s, he went through numerous changes before landing on the one you see before you, the Booty Man. What's the gimmick? He's a guy who's obsessed with his own ass and wants the world to know. His finisher was also called the Heine, because puns. Bafflingly, Billy Gunn stole his idea for the Mr. Ass character, which worked, surprisingly. The Earthquake. A rival of Hulk Hogan in the early 90s, John Tenta had a respectable career in the WWE's golden era. Tenta would leave the company to go to WCW, but couldn't use the Earthquake name, so he settled on the Avalanche, which seemed fine. That was until WWE decided Avalanche was too close to Earthquakes and threatened legal action against WCW, which scared them into changing the name. What did they come up with instead? The Shark. Complete with a goofy face paint and tights. The ridiculous ensemble nearly killed his career until he re-emerged as part of WWE's oddities. Terry Taylor At one point in time, WWE almost gave the Mr. Perfect moniker to former NWA star Terry Taylor before deciding to give it to Kurt Henning. What did Taylor get instead? The Red Rooster. It wasn't just the nickname, this was the whole nine yards. He crowed like a rooster, put his hair up like a rooster, and strutted around like, you guessed it, a rooster. The gimmick was dead on arrival and made Taylor out to be the laughingstock of WWE. Unfortunately for Taylor, he never quite shook off the reputation of it. The One Man Gang While not the biggest name in the golden age of WWE, One Man Gang nonetheless was a solid mid-card heel who briefly flirted with the main event from time to time. He was a big and intimidating bully who looked and acted the part. But then he apparently discovered he had African roots. Sure. Combine this new revelation with a ritual led by his manager Slick, and voila, you have Akeem the African Dream. He would stay in this role until leaving the company in late 1990, and we can see why. Ahmed Johnson Known to most fans as Ahmed Johnson, Johnson is remembered most for his odd ring attire and baffling promos, which would give the Ultimate Warrior a run for his money. But at least he had a little bit of success in the WWE. But once he left for WCW, it was a different story. He came into the company under the ring name Big T, probably because Mr. T was already taken, and he challenged Booker T for the rights to the letter T. Add this brilliant reason onto the pile, and it's blatantly clear to see why WCW died a year after this angle. Headbanger Mosh how weird is it that the headbanger gimmick was only the second weirdest character that Mosh would portray in the WWE? Supposed to be a parody of the Leave it to Beaver television series, a show which we're not sure the Attitude Era's audience even remembered, Mosh played the character of Beaver Cleavage. Who was Beaver Cleavage? Well, it seemed like he was supposed to be a man-child who had a thing for his mom. We can smell that money already. Uh, no, wait, actually, that's just the smell of incest. Ugh. 
That's it for our list. Did we miss any forgotten wrestlers? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to The Sportster on YouTube. Till next time.